Have you ever just looked at the Giza Plateau? Oh, yeah. It's just incredible. It's amazing. The Khafre Pyramid, it just, it grabs you, you know? Mm -hmm. Second largest one there. Uh-huh. You know, built for Pharaoh Khafre. Right. Way back in the Old Kingdom. Yeah. Something like 2570 BCE. Wow. And it's got that smooth section at the top. Right. That still shines today. It does. And it just makes you think, what else is still in there? Yeah, all this time. After all this time. It really does have a sense of mystery, doesn't it? It does. I mean, we know the basic layout, like the main passages, mm -hmm. chambers and things. Yeah. But anything beyond that, deeper inside, has always been, well, a bit of a puzzle. A puzzle. And that's what's so exciting. Yeah. Because we've got some really cool information okay. that came out of this Caffrey Project Conference. Right. Just recently, actually. Yeah. March 15th, 2025. Really recent? Yeah. So that's what we're going to deep dive into today. I like it. The breakthroughs they've had, right? Uh -huh. And. The big thing is, how can we really understand what's inside that pyramid right. without actually digging into it? It's like trying to figure out what kind of seeds are in a fruit Ooh, I like without that. cutting it open, oh, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah. And these researchers, they found some really incredible ways to basically get like an x-ray. Like an x-ray, yeah. Of this ancient monument. And it really is mind-blowing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Some serious aha moments in this one. I bet. So the Khafre Pyramid itself. Okay. I mean, we're talking big, right? Oh, yeah. 136.4 meters tall. Wow. And it's all part of this just incredible ancient landscape at Giza. Right. Alongside the Great Pyramid. Yeah. And Kars Pyramid. Uh-huh. And of course, the Sphinx, the Sphinx, which some people think might actually look like Khafre himself. It's true. It's true. Yeah. The Giza Necropolis is like this incredible snapshot of Oof, the old yeah. kingdom. Yeah. And while Khafre's pyramid may be a little bit shorter right. than Khufu's, it's still a colossal undertaking. Oh, absolutely. What's really fascinating is we know about the main burial chamber yeah. and some of the connections and stuff. But what lies beyond that yeah. has mostly been just educated guesses. Right. Right. Yeah. So that brings us to okay. March 15th, 2025. Right. To this Conferenza Stampa hashtag Giza. Okay. With this hashtag. Right. Hashtag Expedition Nicola Fucolo. I love a good hashtag. You too. Gotta have the hashtag. Absolutely. And this is where Armando May. Okay. Filippo Biondi. Uh-huh. And Corrado Malanga, they're the lead researchers on this Khafre project. All right. Revealed some pretty big findings. Cool. And this wasn't just another boring, you know, well, archaeology report. Right. This was like cutting edge. Oh, wow. What they did. All right. And their main method was they were using advanced tomography. Interesting. And what's really key is they used radar data. Oh, wow. From companies called Capella Space and Umbra. Interesting. Okay. So Capella Space and Umbra, these are like the tech wizards. Okay. In, in this story. I like it. So what exactly did they do? Yeah. Well, the big goal was to build an entire 3D model. Okay. Of the inside of the pyramid. Wow. Using their data. That's amazing. I mean, it sounds like a movie, right? It does. It's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the key things they showed. Okay. Was this slide. Oh, right. At the conference. Yeah. That said, even in Italian, it tells a story. Oh, wow. L'analisi di decine di tomografie ottenute da diverse angolazioni sfruttando i radar di Capella Space e di Umbra hanno permesso la ricostruzione in 3D della maggior parte degli oggetti contenuti all'interno della struttura piramidale di Cafre. Wow, that's a mouthful. It is a mouthful. Even in Italian. Yeah, but the translation is pretty incredible. I mean, it says, the analysis of dozens of tomographies obtained from various angles using Capella Space and Umbra radar has enabled the 3D reconstruction of most of the objects contained within the pyramidal structure of Khafre. Wow. And it wasn't just words. No. They actually had a 3D model. Really? Displayed at the conference. Wow. With all these labeled points. Oh, wow. Showing different things they'd found inside. That's awesome. Suggesting this just crazy network of internal spaces. Really? We never even knew about before. More intricate than we thought. Oh, yeah. So what did they find? Well, they're talking about this complex system. Okay. Of chambers and passageways. Interesting. And they actually had a live projection going on. Oh, wow of this 3D reconstruction as it was happening. That's so cool. So people there could see it unfold. It really shows you the power of these, you know, right. non-destructive techniques. Yeah, huh. so let's dig into the technology a little bit. Okay, yeah. So tomography, All right. you said it's like a medical CT scan. Yeah. But how does that actually work? Right. When you're talking about seeing inside a massive stone structure. It's a good question. Yeah. Well, essentially you're right. Okay. It is like a CT scan. Tomography is really about 
building an image of what's inside something okay by taking lots of different measurements from different viewpoints okay imagine you know you're holding a solid object right if you only look at it from one side all you see is the surface uh-huh but if you can somehow see through it from mm. lots of different angles yeah you can start to build up a picture of what's inside that makes sense and in this case with archaeology okay instead of x-rays right they're using radar waves okay so these waves are sent into the limestone uh -huh. and by measuring how they bounce back or how they get deflected yeah their reflections and refractions okay the scientists can start to learn about the density of what's inside right. and what it's actually made of. Right. So this lets them identify empty spaces, chambers, right. even objects potentially. So that's the tomography part. Yeah. You're getting all this raw data uh -huh. from all these different angles. Mm. So then where do Capella Space and Umbra come in? Okay. With this SAR technology. Right. Synthetic aperture radar. It yep. sounds hey, hey, high tech. Very. It is. Yeah, it is a sophisticated technology, yeah, yeah, yeah. but the concept is pretty clever. Okay. So regular radar yeah. sends out a signal and just waits for it to come back. Mm -hmm. SAR actually uses the movement of the sensor. Okay. In this case, carried by satellite. Right. To pretend to be a much bigger antenna okay. than could actually fit on the satellite. So it's kind of like if you yeah. took a picture uh -huh. with a shaky hand. Right. It's going to be blurry. Right. But if you take a bunch of slightly different images yeah. and you combine them, yeah. you can get a sharper picture. Exactly. So that's kind of what SAR is doing. That's a great analogy. With radar signals. Yeah. By processing the signals as the satellite's moving, right? they can make much more high resolution oh. images okay. of what's underneath. So in this case, inside the pyramid. Right. Exactly. So Capella Space and Umbra both have these, you yeah. know, oh. fleets of these SAR satellites. Right orbiting the earth yeah it's pretty amazing what we can do these days it is amazing and they each have their own specialties you know yeah capella space is really good at taking images in any weather right that's important at any time of day or night yeah you can't exactly just wait no for a sunny day nope. to scan a pyramid exactly and umbra they're known for their super detailed images right how quickly they can get that data back yeah speed is important to the researchers absolutely so they've got these satellites right flying around they're sending these radar waves down huh and because they're moving right they can get this incredibly detailed picture yeah even through solid rock it's mind-blowing isn't it it is mind-blowing we can do that that's amazing the key thing about SAR is that it can actually penetrate right materials like stone and soil even vegetation okay. and that's what let the Caffrey project team yeah. see through these massive limestone blocks right. that make up the pyramid wow. and yeah. collect the data they needed okay so they've got all this data right. from the tomography using SAR mm -hmm. but how does it go from that good question to a 3d model that you can actually look at and explore right so that's where the 3d reconstruction comes in okay so once they have all these tomographic scans from yep. different angles yeah they use this really specialized computer software okay to process it all and put it together right it's kind of like imagine yeah taking lots of really thin slices of an object okay and then using software to stack them all up right to create a model of it on a computer okay yeah so the software analyzes the data uh -huh. looks for patterns anomalies right in the radar signals okay and then it generates this 3d model of the pyramids inside exactly and from what we hear the detail is incredible. Oh, like, whoa. Researchers can actually virtually navigate wow. through these internal structures. That's amazing. And pinpoint specific areas. Yeah. Even potential objects. That's so cool. Or closer examination. So what did they actually find? Right. What were the big discoveries? Yeah. What did we not know about before? Well, one of the biggest things okay. is that they found confirmation of chambers and passageways. Oh, wow. That we never knew about before. Really? Yeah. Like for centuries, yeah. there have been all these rumors and theories mm. about hidden rooms in the pyramid. Yeah. And now the 3D model actually seems to show. Wow that they're really there. So what could be in there? Right. I mean, this is where it gets really exciting. I know, right. Hidden chambers full of ancient treasures. Could you imagine? I know, like, right. Yeah. But beyond just cool stuff, you know. Right. Did it tell us anything about how the pyramid was built? You know, that's a really good point. Yeah. It actually did. Okay. So they found several objects inside. Oh, wow. Now, we don't know exactly what they are right. because the resolution of the radar, while it's impressive. Yep. 
might not be good enough to tell us, right. you know, what they're made of or their exact shape, but they could be anything. Okay. Statues, tools, ceremonial objects, right? anything that was put inside the pyramid when it was built. Or maybe even later. Yeah, exactly. And it also showed us new things about the structure itself. Really? Yeah, the researchers could see what looked like supporting beams. Oh, wow. And get a better idea of how that immense weight of the pyramid right. is distributed. Yeah. Which is important for understanding how they built it. Absolutely. And why it's lasted for so long. So it wasn't just a cool visual. No. It was like a blueprint yeah. for more research. It is. So how do they know what to investigate next? Well, they're probably looking for anything unusual in the radar data. Like, like areas that stand out yeah. from the surrounding limestone. Right. So things that have a different density, mm -hmm. which might mean there's a void or a different material. Right. Okay. The shape and size of these things are clues too. Yeah. So like a regularly shaped void could be a chamber. Okay. But a more defined shape inside a solid area could be an object. Let's see. And the 3D model lets them see how all these things are connected. Right. Which helps them understand what they're looking at. And where to look next. Exactly. This whole thing just feels like it could change how we do archaeology forever. Yeah. It's amazing, isn't it? I mean, exploring these amazing places without actually digging them up. Right. The implications are huge. They are enormous. Yeah. Think about it. Yeah. Yeah. We can preserve these ancient monuments, right. but still uncover their secrets. Exactly. I mean, this method mm -hmm. could be used on so many sites. Yeah, think about the pyramids in Central and South America. Right. The massive temples like Angkor Wat, yeah. even buried cities like Pompeii and Herculaneum. Wow. I mean, imagine being able to map out the insides of these places yeah. before you even start digging. That would be incredible. Yeah, it's a whole new era for archaeology, isn't it? It is. It's not just digging anymore. Right. It's about all these amazing technologies. Exactly. And this Coffrey project really shows yeah. how important it is for different fields to work together. Mm -hmm. Like you've got satellite radar technology, tomography, right. and 3D modeling all coming together. It's amazing. And this isn't just a fad. This is going to be the standard tools for researchers in the future. And it's not just how we explore. Right. It's also what we can learn. About ancient Egypt. Yeah. Beyond just finding new rooms, yeah. what could this tell us about ancient Egypt? Well, it could give us all sorts of insights into their religious beliefs, okay. cultural practices, uh -huh. the political landscape. Of the time, yeah. Especially during Khafre's reign. For example, what they find in these new chambers yeah. might tell us more about burial rituals oh, and yeah. how they thought about the afterlife. Right, right. And the objects they find yeah. could shed light on their craftsmanship Okay. Trade networks. Uh-huh. Daily life. It's like a window into the past. It really is. And a better understanding of the pyramid's structure yeah. could help us answer the question, what was it really used for? Right. Was it just a tomb? Mm -hmm. Or was there some other symbolic or ritualistic reason? Right. This kind of detailed map could give us the evidence we need. To figure it out. Exactly. And this is just the beginning, you know? A, right. A success like this with the Khafre Pyramid yeah, is yeah. going to inspire more research. On the other pyramids at Giza. Exactly. Like, maybe we'll finally get to see yeah. what's inside that void uh, in the Great Pyramid. That was discovered a few years ago. Exactly. So it's a catalyst yeah. for more amazing discoveries. It brings people together, you know? Yeah. For archaeologists, engineers, mm -hmm. physicists. Data scientists. It's a team effort. It really is. To uncover the past. But of course, with any new technology right. and any new discoveries, yeah. there are always challenges mm -hmm. and things we need to be careful about. Absolutely. So what are some of the hurdles okay. that they might face in the future? Well, one of the main things is figuring out what all this 3D data actually means. Right. Like telling the difference between natural rock formations, yeah. things that the ancient Egyptians built, right. and actual artifacts. Mm -hmm. That takes a lot of expertise and careful analysis. It's easy to misinterpret things right. and draw the wrong conclusions. Yeah. And even though SAR and tomography are so powerful, yeah. they do have limits. That's true. So like getting through really dense material right. or telling the difference between objects that are made of similar stuff. It can be tricky. It can be tricky. But the good news is... yeah technology keeps getting better. All right, so we can expect yeah. better resolution, mm -hmm. 
more capabilities in the future. And we also have things like muon tomography. <laughs> right, we talked about that. Which uses subatomic particles to yeah. see through really dense materials. Right, so combining different techniques. Yeah, it can help us overcome those limitations. So what's next for the Kefri project? Well, it sounds like they're going to focus on yeah. refining the 3D model they already have Okay. by analyzing the data in more detail. Right. They might even do more radar scans uh, from different angles. To get a clearer picture. Exactly. And I bet they're also thinking about yeah. using these techniques uh -huh. on other pyramids. At Giza. Yeah. At Giza. Definitely. And they're also interested in using other imaging techniques yeah. like muon tomography to right. really get a complete understanding. It's just incredible that we can essentially look inside this ancient wonder. It is, is there? Without having to disturb it. This coffee project is a massive step forward. I agree. I mean, potentially mm -hmm. changing how we understand this civilization. Absolutely. And everything they achieved. Yeah. By using modern technology, mm -hmm. we're getting access to these secrets that mm -hmm. have been hidden for centuries. It's mind-blowing. It is. And the initial findings. Yeah new chambers and passageways, potential objects, uh -huh. the way the pyramid was built, yeah. it all points to a much richer history. Than we ever knew. Exactly. It really makes you wonder yeah. if we can use these non-invasive technologies right. to understand something as massive as a pyramid. Yeah. What other mysteries could we solve? It could a question. Could we use them to learn more about the Earth's structure? Oh, that'd be interesting. Or maybe even peer into the cosmos. That's a cool thought. In new ways. Yeah, who knows what else is out there. Right, just waiting to be discovered. Exactly. With these new approaches. I think you're right. It's an exciting time. It is. It really is. The secrets of the Khafre Pyramid are still being revealed. Yeah. And thanks to projects like this, mm -hmm. this amazing journey of exploration... Keeps going. ...continues for all of us. That's the best part.